Welcome to Tampa Home Talk with your host, native Tampa real estate girl, Katrina Madewell, a full-time, passionate, out-of-the-box thinker, love for home ownership kind of realtor with over 21 years of combined mortgage and real estate experience. Tune in every week at this time for expert advice on everything you need to know about home ownership, finance, maintaining great credit, building wealth, and making your everyday life better, and how you can be financially successful today and tomorrow. Remember, love where you live or let Katrina fix it. Now, here's your host of Tampa Home Talk, Katrina Madewell. Good afternoon, and this is your host, Katrina Madewell, with Charles Ruttenberg Realty, and you're listening to Tampa Home Talk here on the Real Estate Radio Network. I'm very excited to have you listening to our show today. You can catch us here on 1340, 1350, and 1400 every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. Super excited to have in studio with me today, Scott Leroy and Mike Thatchery with Fieldstone Landscape and design services or no i'm adding words to the name of your company already right see? that's right that's okay Fieldstone landscape services thanks for joining me this afternoon gentlemen how you doing great doing thank you great great thanks you guys for were so much fun during the planning meeting i could hardly wait to have you on air today so <laughs> pretty excited we, we kind of we kind of enjoy life if you will absolutely i agree with you you have to roll with the punches and have fun while you're doing it right on. so true so the topic of our show today is going to be property maintenance spring spruce up if you will i got that one from jen and uh preparation and landscape design and i think we're right about that time of year where it's a great time to be thinking about some of the things you can do to change your landscape um there's many many plants obviously that are seasonal i know you guys are going to get into some of those things as well as palms and different ideas and and show off a, a little bit about what you guys do so who wants to start first talk about fieldstone who are you guys as a company you know where'd you come from and how long you've been in business all that fun stuff yeah absolutely so uh uh, you know uh my name is mike thackeray i started this business about seven years ago uh with my business partner chris eastman uh you know uh we have a similar story to many landscapers out there i I would say we're two st pete natives along with scotty's a st pete native too and uh you know we uh, two guys in a truck and a push mower and knocking on doors and just asking for help, if you will, uh, looking to serve the general public, put some food on the table. And here we are as professionals. We in, employ over 80 employees, uh, and we're proud to say that. We uh, uh, put food on their tables, if you will, with the services we provide. You know, we're a full-service landscape uh, company, uh, commercial and residential. Uh, we do everything from landscape design to landscape enhancement, uh, property maintenance. We take it as a landscape management perspective, if you will. Uh, horticulture, fertilization, pest control, I could go on and on. Anything in the green industry, everyone wants to be green, right. and we are green. So, One of the things I really loved about you guys when we had the chance to talk in advance was um, who you are inside. Like mm-hmm. deep down in your core, I'm a pretty good judge of, of character with people, and I usually can... Um, kind of peg them out, I guess, if you will. And we talked about even me eliminating people not coming on the show after the planning meeting, which is we made it. It's an important we part. It. We just, we, you know, we want really good guests that are genuine, um, that are very transparent, that do a good job, that have good reviews, um, and, and would do a good job if we connected you with one of our clients because it's important to me and it's important to my team. And I think who you guys are as as not only professionals but as people inside resonates with a lot of who I am. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I would say, you know, Fields says it just like any business it is an opportunity to serve the general public and to to uh, 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 affect uh, people, whether whether positive or negative. I think we have to be intentional about that. But uh, the opportunity to affect others uh, uh, exponentially. Right. You know, I can only touch so many people, but with the people on my team like Scott and, and so on and so forth, we have just a, an awesome core group. That's, uh, we that's can our strength. The, co- yeah. the core that, that Mike and Chris have brought on has made Fieldstone grow the way it's grown and so quickly. Um, we, we have uh, a great group of guys, uh, great management staff that hold true to our core values, mm-hmm. you know, I- integrity, quality, and culture. And that's mm-hmm. that's what we strive for every day. And that's what Fieldstone really is is, is all about. What I, I tell my team, and I say this all the time, kind of internally, if you will, I say, you know, I can teach anybody the business. I can teach anybody how to write contracts. I can teach anybody how to understand the law that pertains to contracts. I can teach anybody the ins and outs of how to show a property and sell one. But what you can't teach is care. Mm-hmm. Like you can't teach yeah. who people are on the inside. They right. either have it or they don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it comes to our business, as far as 
as buying and selling real estate, it's usually people's biggest asset. It's their biggest liability Absolutely. and it's their biggest monthly payment. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to us to make sure they like where they live, you know, and yeah. some of these people spend a lot of money. Some of our clients, just like some of the people you guys serve, they spend a lot of money, you know, half a million dollars, million dollars on up mm-hmm. on properties. And so landscapes pretty important to them too it's a big part of their investment it's a huge part i mean it's a it's a 20 percent of the value of your property is what is basically what we tell the customer i mean the curb appeal so let's let's talk huge. about for that a second and just break it down in real numbers because i think the, you know the easier you can make it look black and white the easier it is to understand because you could say 20 percent and that mm-hmm. could fly right by mm-hmm. somebody listening in the car right. but if you have let's say a hundred thousand dollar property mm-hmm. okay 20 percent is going to be 20 grand Correct. Of their yeah, value. Yeah. And then you go to the other end of the spectrum and let's say you have a property that's a million bucks. Yeah. yeah. We, we like to get those contracts. That's a <laughs> huge chunk. I mean, that's and, and the thing about it is, and I'll tell you from a real estate perspective, if you don't maintain your lawn and it doesn't look right, you know, and, and I'm not even going to give this show a date, but I, and I've been on listing appointments pretty recently and mm-hmm. it's, and sometimes, you know, with the economy, people are in different places and they don't have the money. But when I pull up and I see crap in the yard and stuff everywhere, stuff really the homeowners could do, or they could pay a 15 year old kid down the street, even to do, mm-hmm. it's a huge part. And, yeah. and I, and I will tell you, we talked about this yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We pulled up to properties and clients literally will not get out of the car sometimes if they don't like the outside. It's true. I mean, the the fact that, you know, some people say, oh, I'll just go ahead and put down some sod and I'll throw a tree or two in here. Well, you know, if you don't put in the proper irrigation, if you're not taking the time to, to, you know, manicure it, uh, it makes a huge difference. And and that's the first thing I see when, you know, I'm going and looking at houses. I like to have weekends go go look around. And the first thing that catches my eye is the front. It's the yard. Mm -hmm. And if, if you see, you know, 12 inches of grass and trees overhanging, you just you're automatically turned off. Wasn't it you that brought up a point yesterday, or who was it we were talking about? Talking about they like, didn't like the inside of the house and they wouldn't even go inside. You said that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who was that? A friend of yours, or who yeah, was that? I, yeah, somebody I you know. I use names. Somebody yeah. you know. <laughs> it's, it's somebody I know. Yeah. Uh, they they have a beautiful home. You know, uh, they they've spent a lot of uh, money and time in the backyard. But the front yard, you'd look and you'd be like, this this is not the right neighborhood. This this, this can't be it. <laughs> but uh, you go in the backyard and you're like, oh, my gosh, it's a million dollar home. But they uh, they haven't made it to the front yard. I need to push them to. to get, so what's to the get price the point look like for that home? Like gen- generically uh, speaking, I mean, that's a seven hundred thousand dollar home. OK, uh-huh. so and three quarters of a million dollars in yeah. the front yard. Is not, <laughs> yeah. you know, you got yeah. whatever the I weeds mean, are that grow in the landscape. That's your field. Not mine. Yeah, I'm like, let's let's throw in some irrigation. Let's put in some lighting, some new turf down, throw a couple, you know, palms, some shrubs. And all of a sudden you have an entirely different home. Yeah, and, and, and if you look at it, I mean, really what we all do in the service industry every day is educate the, the, our clients. I mean, we're, we're in the business of – that's what we're doing now. We're here to serve by educating, and that's, that's what, what you – that individual obviously has not been educated yet. He's a friend of mine too, so I won't name him. <laughs> right. But, but uh, you know, once, once they see the value of, of – once they recognize the value of what our service provides – uh, uh, and just like any service in the service industry, mm-hmm. uh, um, they, they they'll act. It just will. it makes a huge difference. I can't I can't stress yeah. it enough. And you guys see it. Um, let's talk about some of the software that you guys mentioned because I mm-hmm. thought you know in the day and age, I mean, obviously between the apps and the technology we have, yeah. it's amazing. It and is. you guys can basically simulate an entire landscape design by just simply taking a picture of the front of the house. Yeah, one of the greatest things for us now is. You know, it used to be a piece of paper, and here's the X is the palm, the O is the shrub, and, and here's the layout. Now, Wait, don't forget about the little guy with the shovel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We forgot all about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we had that for sure. <laughs> um, but now uh, we go out, and we take a, a photo with the iPhone and bring it back, put it in 3D Landscape Pro. Now, if it's a board member or a homeowner or whatever, we, we sit down and we say, you know, what, what are you looking for? You want St. Augustine grass? Do you want zoysia grass? What kind of palms do you want? What kind of shrubs? Do you want it tiered? We get all that information, we bring it back, and then our landscape designer in-house goes over everything, implements it to the T. We bring it back to the homeowner and say, you know, is this what you're looking for? And then we get the people that are like, you know, you know that place called Disney? That's, that's really what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's going to be a little while. Okay, but, but it, the nice thing is we bring it back to them, and they get to see exactly what they're paying for. So, you know, we give that to our enhancement manager. They're the ones that go out there and do the install. They have the picture right there. They know exactly what the homeowner wants. You know, and, and I'll say, too, that it's, it's challenging because we, we, we have a, a, 
we have a great opportunity to, to actually show our end product. You know, there's a lot of services. An electrician goes in with respect. My uncle's an electrician, and he does, and they flick the light switch on, and that's great. And, but, uh, you know, once he does his service. But when we uh, do this, we're the end of the project. Yes. And people, it affects people's emotions. You get I, the fun part. That's exactly right. And we're, we're okay with that. It's it's interesting. It's a lot like home staging. And, and home stagers, you know, I have my ASP realtor stager designation, and I work with some stagers in the Bay Area. And we've staged a lot of properties together from the smallest to some of the biggest. And it's interesting because a lot of the times, and it should be, part of a stager's plan, and the good stagers always have a written plan, right? Like, I didn't even realize this one day till I had my stager that I work with on the show. And he said, you know, Katrina, I, I put together this whole vision and, and looking at what I have and what we need to get. And I literally write out a whole plan. So if I were to get sick, someone could literally pick up my notes and run with it. And I thought that is, that's the difference between a professional and somebody that's not. But part exactly. of their, part of their process is also the front. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I want to give you an example while we're on topic. Mm-hmm. There's this property in um, Live Oak, okay? And it was pretty new. Um, the clients of mine actually moved to South Tampa. They had originally lived there and it was just too far of a commute for them and they wanted to live in South Tampa. So this property had been through two other agents before I got it and I was going into a listing appointment. So I'm looking through all the notes. I'm looking at the days on market. I'm looking at all this stuff and I drove by the property. So, you know, at this point I'm trying to, you know, what is it? Because usually when a property has been on the market for a long time, there's a couple of reasons why it doesn't sell. Right. You know, either it's not accessible. It can't be shown. Um, the location, which the location's not bad. It's not what the seller wanted, but there's a lot of people that want to live in New Tampa. So that's not it. Mm-hmm. Price has a lot to do with it. And it wasn't the price, even though we were in a declining market. And I, I looked at it and there was there were some things that were definitely the price. And I'm certainly not by any means as extensive as you guys. But what I did do was I when I drove by to look at the property before I went on the listing appointment, I actually took a photo, like took a photo and of the front of the house. And then I had it developed like a picture I could actually hand them, not mm-hmm. something on my phone, not something on my iPad, like something I could hand something them. Like tangible. And so when we did the initial consultation, I said, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons and theories why your home hasn't sold, but I'll tell you what I think, you know, and you have this big house. It was probably, I think it was about 5,000 square feet. I'm trying to remember, but it was two story and it literally looked like a big gray box. Mm. And I told him that and I handed him the picture and I said, I'm looking at this and you know what I see? A big gray new box and the home just doesn't have any design and appeal so i said here's my thoughts you know i'm going to get with the stager this is what i think it's going to cost you i'm going to give you a ballpark but let's bid it out so what i did and what my ideas were and they kind of took the job and ran with it but i had general ideas i said you know what let's order a big palm tree for the side Mm -hmm. let's put some little the you guys will have to, I know we're going to talk about palms later, but <laughs> the three um, palms that usually grow in a group, they stay a little bit shorter. The triple stock. Thank yeah. you. Whatever oh, that palm is. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So we put one yeah. of those, we added a bunch of colorful stuff like crotons and just things mm-hmm. that bloom and have a lot of color and yeah. give it some nice look. Right on. Um, we also added a bunch of red mulch and then, you know, to try to stay within their budget because they obviously couldn't afford to repaint the whole house, nor did they need to because it was, it looked nice. We changed the color of the trim. So those are the things we do as a very small budget. I mean, you know, right? That stuff's not yeah, super expensive to do. The budget, though. Yeah, right. yeah. But when you're done with a project like that and you look at before and after, what's what's the impact on that? Like, right. what's the what kind of stuff do you guys hear when you and I know, you know, the house, like as I'm describing oh, yeah. this, you can oh, yeah. see the house in your mind of something you've done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The, the McMansion that has no, you know, and you were talking about the big gray box. Absolutely. And that just is what it is. That's what the architects and the engineers and everything, you know, it's what they came up with. And that's wonderful. Uh, and and then they they somehow forget about uh, us, right? And that's okay. We're, 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 we don't take it personal. But well, you don't have to be good at everything, but right. you need to be good at one thing. And if they're good at the design of the house, so be it. But that's then it. they Sim- need to go to you. Simplify and focus. Come yeah. to us and we'll take care of it. But the beautiful thing about it, to, to your point, is what you're doing is you're breaking up those hard edges and those big open spaces of just concrete or of wood. You're, you have these big blotches of nothing, and you're breaking up those edges. You'll see a lot of times we'll place our, our landscape designer, Adam Parrott's awesome, very, very good landscape designer. And, and uh, he'll come to the edges and he'll put palms on the corners of the homes. And that's not just uh, uh, um, a parenthesis on, on the home, but it's actually breaking up that edge, that corner. When we see a big open space like that, nobody wants to see a big wall. You want to break it up with right. some softness. And, the, and, you know, I'm an analogy guy, so I actually kind of picture what we do in, in, in adding that additional landscaping is, is kind of like, uh, you know, if you don't have it, it's kind of like walking out. I don't wear makeup. 
typically. But, um, but <laughs> it depends uh, on what day of the week it is, right? right? But it's kind of like, you know, a, a, a lady walking out without makeup and no accessories, you know, uh, when you put the accessories on a little blush, it just pops. You know, everyone, it, 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 and you, you feel could that have a whole new right? girlfriend right? two hours right? later with some makeup. <laughs> right? Great it's, analogy. Sorry, I probably okay. should have planned it that is, one. Though, no, that's great. <laughs> no, yeah. That's real. But and this true. is real radio, and I love that. And this right is on. absolutely what my show is about. Right so, I mean, anybody yeah. listening to Tampa Home Talk that would be my followers that would listen to this would expect this. So yeah. it's right. perfect. Good. That's great. That's great. Do you have any more to add to that now? <laughs> yeah, no. no you got to dwell on that for a little while. Let's have some silence. <laughs> Speaking of which, we actually have to take a real quick break here on Tampa Home Talk. If you miss any part of our show today, you can catch the show in its entirety because I know people are getting in and out of the car. They're busy, but we'll be here every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. You'll catch our uh, show via a podcast. Just search for Tampa Home Talk. And you can find us across the web on Facebook and Twitter at Tampa Home Talk. We'll be back in just a minute. Ask me about an inside secret to save several hundreds of dollars on your annual homeowner's insurance premium. Text the word WIND, W-I-N-D, to 813-377-2775. Again, 813-377-2775. I'm John Rakowski, the broker with Charles Ruttenberg Realty. If you are a real estate agent and want to keep more of your hard-earned commission, call me today at 727-538-9200, extension 2. This call will change your real estate career. Hi, this is Melissa Rogers, owner of SEC Inspection Services. We're so glad that you're listening today that we're offering you a special deal. If you're purchasing a home, you can have $50 off your full home inspection. And if you're already a client of ours, we're offering 10% off of any other service that we offer. Just give us a call at 727-786-4663 or visit us on the web at secinspection.com. Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. This is your host, Katrina Madewell. Thank you so much for rejoining us today. If you missed the first part of our show, you may want to catch it out in its entirety. We're available via a podcast for at TampaHomeTalk.com. Also on Facebook and Twitter across the web at Tampa Home Talk. In studio today, we have Scott Leroy and Mike Factory with Fieldstone Landscape. And we went into some of the details regarding how to spruce up those plain boxy looking houses and a bunch of really awesome details you guys made a good point during the break maybe you should chime in on real quick we, we talked about bleh, i'm tongue-tied today we were talking about the um home depot and lowe's like you know the normal yeah go do it yourself type of thing they have the mulch always on sale and, and residential does a lot of the red mulch mm-hmm. yep we, we say you know we always try to educate people we, we always hear oh red mulch and and kind of for big red flag for us because you know we see people spending so much money on the plant material and we want the color to actually come from the plant material not the actual mulch underneath you know so it's 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 something that when you're driving you know through residential communities you see tons of red mulch but what we try to educate our you know our homeowners is that you know cocoa brown mulch there's black mulch there's pine bark there's other things that will give the plants more of a pop than the red on the ground the black mulch is actually beautiful i i, I, I actually put that have in my red, house i have it in my house i the have black, black mulch. mulch yeah i do it's just it looks like a fresh layer of black topsoil all the time so the colorful plants just pop Yes, for sure. Um, and so for commercial, a lot of times they're going to go with the darker stuff, right? Yeah, the a lot brown. of times with commercial, uh, we use a lot of Malaluga. And, and the reason for that is, you, get, you know, when you have a lot of rains and you get washed out onto the sidewalks, it actually has a, it sticks. Hmm. So when it rains, you don't get that washout that you get with the, the pine bark. Right. Half the, your mulch the is down the street. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You just put it in yesterday. That can be frustrating. Absolutely. So since we're in spring, let's talk about some ideas, some landscapes, some plants, any thoughts and trends you guys are seeing now to kind of spruce up for spring. So that's part of the topic of our show. You know, I, you know, I was thinking about that, you know, and, and what w- one thing that we do. So so you spend the money on your on your and you make the investment on your on your landscape and uh, whether residential, commercial, it doesn't matter. You 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 a lot that amount, and you go and, and you have your basic uh, uh, setup every year. You're seeing the same thing. You're getting used to the same plants. I was thinking about this in my front yard, uh, walking out this morning, prepping my mind for the show. But you look, and one thing that we do to kind of add some personality to it is uh, an annual rotation. Um, 
we go in and, and typically four times a year. I mean, some some clients, the higher end clients like the Vinoy and some 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 really uh, resort style uh, communities, they want it, uh, us to do it every month or every other month, six times a year. But then we can go in and, and change out with some pentas. I think right now we have a rotation of coleus going out to our properties. And you'll just... So explain what some of those plants yeah. look like. If someone listening is not familiar, and I'm by far not the horticulturist by any means. Right, so right. You, you explain what flowers. they look like. You yeah. think flowers. You yeah. think, uh, you know, pentas. You, we're putting in a lot of pentas right now, white, purple, pink, um, red, uh, and then we'll do a, sometimes just big mixtures and we'll do patterns and we'll do swoops. It just depends on what the client looks for. That makes um, sense. We, we, uh, I, I'm, we're happy to say that we, we now are servicing and, and actually working on uh, the new Buck's new head coach's house. And they like swoops of white and, and pink. That's what they want. So we're, we're doing giant swoops of I mean, white. They didn't do it in the Buck's and, colors. Yeah, I'm so yeah. disappointed. Well, not this rotation, but right. next probably time. next rotation. Talk into. If we have yes. a winning rotation, there you go. winning season, you have to change your landscape out to match the Buck's And then I'll have to probably end up doing like bucks flag designs in the yard <laughs> That's and then, sweet. You know. but it but really though if you look at it it kind of puts that nice new fresh look and the whole point is is you can you don't have to you know refresh the entire landscape you just have that one area that impact area that you're walking by all the time uh, when you have a guest they they notice that you change something in the landscape so which i would imagine is a lot like home ownership like the taboo word in our house is deferred maintenance because it's a real estate term and we use it all the time and right. so deferred maintenance is like you know regular home or maintenance things you're supposed to be doing and then you let it go for such a period of time that now it's a big ticket item yeah. and i would imagine that landscape is a lot like that with what you just mentioned yeah it's exactly like that you know we, you could relate it to, to your, even your own body we have to take care of our own body we have to maintain and and, and sometimes and this is in terms of educating the clients is we have to realize that when we add 10 15 20 thousand dollars worth of landscaping now we have to reassess who and how it's being managed along the way. And managed, I, we see managed uh, buzzword for us. It's really maintained. Is this part of your plan? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. With the client? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we love, do, we love doing installs for residential. And, and we have good residential uh, relationships with companies that if we've done that, then we'll refer them to them. We know they'll be taken care of on that side. Mm-hmm. On the commercial side, you know, we prefer to have the contract before we do any, you know, maintenance work because then we can warranty the plants. We know they're getting watered at the right times. We know they're getting the right fertilizers. We're in control of it. So if something dies, we have to warranty it. And we're gotcha. fine with that because we have control of that. And, and I imagine sometimes you just get a defective plant, right? It, yeah, happens. it happens. It happens. It happens all the time. So I know we talked about palms, right? Because everybody adds we're in florida especially if they're from somewhere else they always want palms they love palms but there's so many different variations of palms do you know how many out of curiosity oh no no um a and, lot. i think there's literally a like a hundred is there? a lot yeah there's a whole bunch and there's different regions you know i mean uh, when you go up into the lutes lutes region and you or you're dealing down on on st pete beach or sarasota i mean we're dealing with different regions uh different excuse me different client uh, climates um, um, so really the right plant, right place, we have to take into consideration. Plus the salt water probably has a factor. It's huge. Like- and, and that's one thing uh, for any homeowner that's looking to put it in anything. There's a website and it's uh, floridayards.org. Okay. And so anything that you're looking for, whether it's a flower, a shrub, a palm, you can go in there and customize exactly what you want. So the questions that they'll ask are uh, how much water does the area get? Uh, is it a sun place? Is it a shade place? Is it partial? What's the soil condition like? Is it clay? Is it sand? Um, is it a salty area You're right there on the water? Uh, and, and then it'll actually give you a database of exactly what your yard is. What are the best plants for exactly. your yard? That's exactly. sweet. Yeah, and we use it a lot. We use it a lot. If, we, you know, if we're out at uh, Point Brittany, we know they get a huge sea breeze. So we'll put in high, uh, high salt. Uh, it's a sandy base, so we know you know we click in those, and then we get our choices, and we know what will have the best chance to live out there. I mean, it makes sense because you—it's the same reason why you can't take plants from other regions up north and bring them here because they exactly. either can't tolerate the heat mm-hmm. or they don't like the soft sandy soil. Yeah, and, and and when you're when you're doing a landscape design, when we turn it into to our design department, if you will, and they go through what we were talking about, land, pro landscape and and producing this this design, you know, we take into effect this is it's very important, and we talked about this yesterday with your clients how we have to set expectations and also hear expectations i think we have to be better listeners because our clients tell us what the the purpose for instance we'll talk about the palms um if it's a focal point palm we might want to do something fun like a bismarck 
Um, uh, Bismarck's are real majestic and wide, and they need room to grow. Uh, Medjool palms are beautiful. They're the ones you see down the down the side of the highway, and they're uh, just beautiful palms out of the out of the west and and uh, um, out of the deserts, if you will. Uh, and then if it's not, if it's just an accent piece, we can go a little lower, and we can go with like an adenidia or a foxtail, uh, which we can actually light those up and make those look beautiful too. But they're not so much focal point palms, if you will. So. We'll have to have your arborist on sometime just to do a whole segment yeah, on palm trees. I think great. that would be such a cool show. Like it's something I'm curious about and have been for years. That'd be mm-hmm. great. I'm like I should write a blog on the, on the number know, of yeah. palms. They're, it's it's unbelievable, and it's it's the right plant, the right place. You look, and then it comes down to budget too. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, well, I want this big grand Bismarck," and and then they say, "What's the budget?" Well, I got a couple hundred dollars. Well, let's start looking at small fox <laughs> yeah. because that Bismarck's about five grand. Right, so, right, right. Or just the plant. Yeah, just the plant. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, and, and I'll share too. And, and Scotty used this application in his backyard in the northeast uh, part of St. Petersburg there. We, we, um, uh, one thing that we've seen is people utilizing uh, landscape material instead of uh, fencing. Uh, so he, he needed a fence. I love that. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So he used Arica palms, uh, Alabuki, um, viburnum. Alabuki viburnum. You know, these are you can let them grow, trim them twice a year, once a year, hand prune them. They don't, they're not a formal trim, if you will. You just pull out the dead and mm-hmm. so on. And they're very manageable uh, because you don't have to manage them. You let them go. It's That's true. awesome. I mean, really, a lot of people I know in this day and age work a lot, like me, probably like you guys. Yes, man. So the more stuff you can get that kind of takes care of itself, it's low maintenance and it looks good. I, I think that should be a huge factor when you're prob- when you're trying to plan and you know prepare for your landscape. Yeah, luckily I love it. I mean, we spent I I, de- I definitely spent at least an hour or two on the weekend mm-hmm. on the back and front yard just because. I got a little bit of everything back yeah. there. <laughs> you know, and, and it's a slight jungle. And you said something right there, low maintenance. You know, I think uh, there's no such thing as no maintenance, that, but there is low maintenance, right. you know, and that's just picking the right plant material and so on. Absolutely. I, we have uh, something, one of my... I guess th- if you live in the desert and you want a cactus, then mm-hmm. you could probably get away with no Perfect. maintenance. Perfect. Yeah. Or if you live in the woods and just don't care, right? Yeah. Just let it go. That's true. <laughs> I, I don't know what that husband would look like, yeah. but <laughs> So let's let's talk about why someone should work with a landscape designer. Like why why what's a good reason for someone to do that? Obviously, other than it's twenty percent of the value. Yeah, well, I mean, you have the ideas in your head and you, you think like this is exactly what I'm picturing in my mind, but to actually get that out there and looking exactly like you want it, having that designer, they can, you know, do everything, give you the visual that you can see. And, and you know exactly what you're paying for at the end of the day. And, and that way you can go back and you can keep tweaking. Maybe what you originally pictured wasn't exactly, you know, what, what the design came out to be. And you just go, it's, it's a process. And we the, just go back and forth and back and the forth. The interesting thing, too, with professionals, and I imagine you probably see this when you get into waterfalls and that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. you have to think about the whole picture. And so part of your job as a professional is, you know, would you, like one of the things my husband wanted to do was put a waterfall kind of like against the house and have it running towards the front. And I'm like, no, 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 no. No, because water, water is water. not your house's no. friend. Right. No. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things where like, yeah, it might sound like a cool idea in theory, but, you know, professional people and people that see stuff later in the whole thing they're going to be able to give you a lot of insight absolutely that you're you're not going to have well well, and you protect your investment with working with a professional because of what you just said someone who's looking at it every single day looking at the same that not just the beginning of the project but they've seen the beginning middle and end many times in the last week right you know it's just over and over and you know i was thinking about when scott was saying that about the why to use a landscape designer it it, it ties into that because uh you know using the right plant in the right place you know if you if you if you put a uh, plant material up against the uh, seawall that is not salt tolerant, and you don't know that. Well, right. you're you're wasting your money. I mean, honestly, and we don't want. We, we don't I want mean, that. the poor plant. You don't want to kill it either. Yeah, no. exactly. And, and it, it helps. Yeah. It really helps with the budget. Yeah. You know, if you have somebody and you can say, okay, this is what I have to work with. What can we do? Let's get creative. This is the stuff I like. Can can it actually happen? And and they can make it happen. Okay, so let's let's dive into the next thing. And I have this palm. We've been in our house for 10 years. That was probably right about the roof line. Mm-hmm. And now it's so tall, we can't even trim it unless we get a cherry picker. It's that big. Mm-hmm. Like one of those things that go 40 yep. feet in the air. So let's talk about the licensed, insured landscape contractors as opposed to, you know, the people that would always drive by my house. Hey, I was doing your neighbor's palm <laughs> down the street. <laughs> right, can right. I trim your palm? Like, right. yeah. I know why I think that's not a good idea. But if it falls on hear. your roof, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
yeah. and you'll never see me again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, outside of that, what if they fall, fall when they're trimming the palm? Absolutely. Yeah. That's true. I mean, Absolutely. And, every, and, we, and we look at the I life. I should have an attorney on the show to chime in if that one. Yeah, right, right, right. Actually, I, I am an attorney also. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so uh, you know, it's a, it's a great point. It's a point that gets talked about a, a lot. And you just see it on people's trucks, licensed and insured. And it's wonderful. It, it protects your family, protects your, your, your homestead, if you will, in terms of injury and lawsuit and so on if someone gets hurt. But, um, and people can, if they fall and get hurt, they can lien your property. They 100%. can put a judgment against you, and it does attach to real estate. And it happens. Mm-hmm. It That's happens. the scary thing is it very much happens. Um, uh, you know, and in terms of, cert- excuse me, certification, at, uh, you know, our industry has low barriers to entry, meaning that we have minimal uh, uh, official like state regulations, if you will, uh, in terms of the green industry. We do have some with our irrigation contractor license, and our, our, our arborist license, and our horticulture license, and so on. Um, so for pest control and so on, but we do have some, but not all are required such as like a, an electrician or, um, um, let's say a plumber, a general contractor, right? We, we have, therefore we have a lot of, uh, uh, fly by night companies or individuals, which, uh, opens up homeowners to, to, to that danger of right. that happening. So, you know, one place that we go and we're committed as a company, Fieldstone's committed to, uh, to education. We put our, our money where our mouth is. We actually host uh, testing for the state. Uh, FNGLA. Is, what do you mean by you host testing with the state? Well, okay. So, so there's an organization called FNGLA. Which stands Florida, for? Florida Nursery Growers and Landscape Association. If okay. there was anyone who governs us, that's who it is. It's unofficial. Uh, in terms of state regulation, uh, but it's an excellent organization. It's a Florida-based organization. So it's a lot like what we talked about in our planning meeting, how home inspectors for the longest time until like three years ago were not regulated. Right. Um, exactly. we, w- we would have to rely on their credentials for like American Society of Home Inspectors or ASHI right. um, because there was no entity right. that regulated them. Right. And so your business, you're saying is pretty much like that still. Yeah. So what we do exactly. And what we do is we go to them for education. They have, they've already organized or, uh, education and organized the testing and certifications. And we partnered with them and said, Hey, listen, we'll host it. And it's open. Uh, when we say hosting it at our site, at our, our office in Clearwater, we, uh, we actually host the testing in the classes and we offer it to our, our team, but also we have competitors. So you there. open it up to everybody. Yeah. That's Absolutely. awesome. It used to be a P tech. And then we just, what uh, what is PTech? It's uh the the night school. Pinell, yeah, Pinell is technical. Okay, mm-hmm. like gotcha. That, right. Yeah, and and they uh, well, it's we, probably nice for them because they can use your office, and really, I'm sure you don't charge them, and they right, don't have right, the overhead exactly. which they have to pass on to the people taking That's the board. Exactly. And we have equipment there. We have things you know, they can see to really see if this is you know the the business they want to be in. Um, and and the nice thing is once they go through that the night school and and get they have their horticulture license and they have it, and you, know, you still have to do CEUs to continue the education to hold it. Um, but that is a huge part of our industry. So talk about horticulturists and their um, regulation of the company that, and, and then where you guys play a big part of that. Cause you guys have more. On- yeah. So, so, so yeah, we're, we're, like I said, we're committed to it, but I think, you know, like I said, you got to look at the, uh, from a company's perspective, you can say you're committed to something, but let's see where you spend your time or your money, right? Put your money where your mouth is. And, and, uh, we actually have, and we've given scholarships internally to our, 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 our uh, team members and so on, incentivizing them and helping them. We've even financed uh, 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 the the opportunity because it's it's about it's like a, going it's to expensive. school or whatever. Right, exactly. Do that. And uh, we actually boast proudly. Um, uh, my mom says I can't boast, but I think in this situation is okay. Uh, we have the most certified horticulture professionals through that FNGLA. So FCHPs through FNGLA. A lot of acronyms there, but in the state of Florida. So including municipalities, the largest landscape companies in the world are in our market. Um, in, in one team, we have the most FCHPs on our team. There's a lot to be said for that, I think, especially, yeah. Yeah. you know, you want to have the best of the best in your industry. Well, and the nice thing is when we send those foremen out, we trust and know that they've been educated. They know what to look for. They know what fungus, if there's something being attacked, they can address it. And then we can send, you know, the Hort team out to address any issue. So it's great because they know what to look for now. It's not just, hey, I can go cut grass. Give me a weed eater. Right. I'm ready. 
You forgot they, the edge on the weed whacker. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, and there's a bigger commitment to the industry there too, because, because the reality is not everyone stays and some people advance or move on or move out of the, uh, uh, um, our city, if you will, and right. they get another job in the industry. Well, they're still certified. That's not our certification. That's their individual certification. So it's educating our industry as a whole in our market, if you will. So. That is sweet. There's a lot to be said for that. We, yeah. I know we also asked you guys some of the top frequently asked questions you get, and we haven't even really chipped a dent in it. So when we come back in just a few minutes, we're going to talk about when's the best time of year to do landscape, what are some of the guidelines around watering newly built or newly installed landscape, and that type of stuff. If you missed any part of our show today here at Tampa Home Talk, catch us on the web at tampahometalk.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter, and all of our shows are available on a podcast. Again, in studio today, we have Scott Leroy and Mike Thatchery with Fieldstone Landscape Services. We'll be back in just a minute. Hi, this is Aaron Davis, owner of Hillsboro Title. Hillsboro Title is a local, family-owned title agency here in Tampa Bay. Our service, strength, and knowledge make us different. We've served Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. From Polk County to the Gulf, Pasco to Manatee, Tampa Bay, we've got you covered. Call us at 813-712-8888 or visit us on the web at thebesttitle.com. That's thebesttitle.com. Curious where your credit score is? Text the word credit to 813-377-2775. Not sure where it needs to be in order to buy? We'll tell you. Simply text the word credit to 813-377-2775 for access to your credit score now. Hi, this is Melissa Rogers, owner of SEC Inspection Services, where we offer full inspections and insurance inspections. Give us a call at 727-786-4663 or visit us on the web at secinspection.com. Curious what your Tampa home is worth? Here's an easy way to find out what homes like yours are selling for in today's market. Text the word VALUE to 813-377-2775 for a free report on Tampa house prices. We'll send you a free report with up-to-the-minute statistics based on all homes for sale, sold in your neighborhood over the last six months in all price ranges. To get your free report on Tampa Bay house prices, just call or text the word VALUE to 813-377-2775. Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. This is your host, Katrina Madewell on the Real Estate Radio Network. Thank you so much for rejoining us for the last part of our show. If you missed any part of today's show, it is available via a podcast in its entirety with Fieldstone Landscape. Boy, I keep trying to mess that up, don't I? (laughs) With Scott Leroy and Mike Thatchery. Awesome job. I've had a really awesome time with you guys in the studio today. We've had a lot of fun, which is how I love doing the shows. We have to. Thank you again so much for coming in. Well, thanks for having us opportunity thank you so we we talked about so many other things i don't even think i have enough time to recap which is normally what we do but so let's just jump into the next part um what's what's some of the best time of year to do landscape installation i thought that was interesting that's one of your frequently asked questions yeah well it's florida so there's always the a good time fall and spring you know uh we we, right now is when we are on full block for the next four or five weeks backed up is everybody right now you're gonna say four or five months no (laughs) (laughs) i wish yeah (laughs) no but it's right now it seems to be that all of a sudden when when literally uh june hit is it memorial day is that the trigger it is it's like it it is home depot puts all the mulch out for sale and everybody's like wait a second let's let's get things done (laughs) we're late um and and so literally now it's just it it's taking off and and you know from small projects to to huge projects so with the water restrictions do you know off the top of your head what the guidelines are with regards to newly installed landscape landscape mm-hmm. and plants like is there still restrictions or mm-hmm. do you get some leniency you do and uh they it's really it's actually really nice uh you know you're beautifying the city or, uh, so they want to want to uh so no matter what the regulations are uh outside of the new planting if you will you can uh water for 30 days actually uh, post new planning. So every really day nice. for 30 days every if you right. needed to. Days, That's yeah. right. And w- what we would suggest is, is to, uh, you know, talk to the plants, let them talk back to you. So when you get in that, you know, when you, when you, when you, <laughs> you're the plant, <laughs> you're the plant with 
whisperer, aren't you? I know it. He does. Something like that. He goes that. out there and rubs the leaves, Talks smells them. <laughs> mm, yep. Yep. Mike's in his zen mode in the garden. And the next thing you know, your basil's a foot taller. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Game time. No, but really, I mean, after three weeks, if it's, you know, what you want to watch out for is fungus. You know, we're looking in the, in, coming into a rainy season coming up here, you know, and, and, uh, you know, in the summertime, those afternoon showers, those, we're born and raised here. So we know about three yes. o'clock in the afternoon, you look up and here comes a storm. Don't be out on your boat. You don't that's get stuck right. in that. That's right. <laughs> uh, been there, been there, done that. Right? I know, so, right? So, Anybody's so, done that, it's like, oh. It's terrible. So we have, so, so, I mean, I think you have to, to think about the season you're in. Think about the trends that are going on. Don't just water just because you can. Uh, water because it needs it, you know, um, um, and at homeowners that want to be more involved, they can, you know, tweak that and go to the valves of the irrigation box and turn them on and so on. But they can work with their landscaper. They're, 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 you were talking about fungus. Can you talk a little bit about that yeah, more? Because so, so, I, I wasn't quite following you all the way. And I'm right, sure if right, I right. wasn't, then the listener Good point. probably wasn't either. Yeah. So a lot of times uh, fungus will come from overwatering. They're, you know, wet feet in the plant, if you will. So if you're overwatering that plant material, um, um, it'll, it'll show fungus. There's a lot of different kinds of, of fungus. Uh, that that could put a different visual. You could Google image plant f- fungus, and you'll you'll see what we're talking about. Um, um, the one thing you want to avoid, if you do have wet feet in the plant, if it's very damp, is you want to avoid any nitrogen. You want to avoid any fertil- fertilizer because the fungus will increase greatly. Uh, you also want to avoid overwatering even more. I you know it's some some of those things that. I guess unless you do that or you have a horticulture background, you probably don't even realize you're killing the plant. Mm-hmm. Like that would be me. Right. Yeah. The yeah. running jokes, I have the brown thumb, but I actually have a few like, yeah. you know, herbs and stuff I can use in the kitchen. Would mm-hmm. you probably talk to them more? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, you know, I don't remember, but maybe if I talk to them, they'll grow a little better. It's I'm all gonna a try. relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Communication. I, you know, my mom used to talk to her plants. I think she still does. She's right. got the greenest thumb ever. So you probably are onto something right, right there. On. Right. Yeah. On. Showing them love. You got to show them love. So what about the spots in the lawn? Like if it's yellow or if it's dead or if it's brown, like is that the dog peen on the grass yeah, well, or what we, is that? We were ta- we talked a little bit about that yesterday. You know, uh, different you types of grass. You love my sense of humor. Seriously, though. Well, St. <laughs> Saint- Augustine Hopefully is what. Uh, what you see out here most of the time. Um, and uh, with that, you know, brown spot could be, you know, an overspray of Roundup. It could have been, uh, you know, fungus starting. It, it could be chinch bugs. That's something we deal with a lot around here. Um, with zoysia, if it is a yellow spot, then it's probably a dog. I have to comment on the chinch bugs because yes. I, it was one of the big chain mm-hmm. nationwide companies i had a client actually tell me that they grabbed one of those bugs i think it was one of those bugs or some bug that was in the lawn mm-hmm. put it in a plastic ziploc bag and taped it to their door and said this is what you have in your grass mm. <laughs> it didn't a, go over so well yeah with that's one way to uh, communicate <laughs> yeah uh, over communication i guess yeah. <laughs> i was shocked i had never heard of that wow. and that's what she said and i was yeah. like and really if you don't address those they will they'll take your whole yard I mean, they will. That's yeah. one thing. If you start noticing big brown patches and you can see it almost like a reddish tint on the outside of the mm-hmm. green, then that's something to get to get a horticulture company out there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so one of the other frequently asked questions you guys get is what type of services provided after the insulation? You want to dive in on that a little bit? Yeah, you know, I, I would just say people, we have to understand um, uh, we have to understand that we, when we make that initial investment. Um, like we talked about before, is now we have to maintain that investment. And there comes you have to have the plan prior to, if you will. But um, understanding that everything is integrated, everything goes together in terms of our services uh, provided, uh, the irrigation, the pest control, the preventative pest control, uh, the fertilization program, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the maintenance services, how we're going to prune, what plant materials, the seasonal pruning. All that goes together. That's kind of why we back up and say, you know what? We're landscape managers. You know, we're, we're, we're not just landscape maintenance. That's one service that we offer is the landscape maintenance. And, and, and any professional uh, company, and there's many around that, are, that, that, that offer these services, they understand the integration. And it's hard when, when, someone, when a client wants to pull something off, like, no, 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 I'll take care of the irrigation. Well, that, that's great. But if I'm putting down a product or a, a, a chemical that needs to be watered in, 
and I don't have control of that, that water, if I'm not managing the water, uh, it can cause problems. So really understanding that whole integration of all the services that we provide uh, is an imperative. Very imperative. So what if you're somebody like me and I'm all about, let's, really let's, pay, let's pay the guy. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. and I'll just tell you how it works in my house. I told you I was married mm-hmm. for 16 years, been together for 20 years, got mm-hmm. three kids. Right. But me, I'm all about, let's pay the guy. And my, hu- my husband's like, no, I-, I can do it. I don't want to pay the guy to do what I can do. But you work a million hours a week and so do I. So this is like the regular fight we have in our house. So let's say you have somebody like that and they're, you know, they're, they're starting or they have this type of thing going. What are the no no's for that? And then a lot of times I imagine you guys pick up those type of accounts, but what are, what are the no, the landscape no no's if you will? The la- well, you just kind of, you kind of wait and see, see what the husband, you know, <laughs> a- after a few, six months and all of a sudden he's out there and he's like, Yelling at the yard and it's, <laughs> there's brown spots everywhere. And he's like, all right, cu- give, give me a company. Yeah, Just give yeah. me no, a company. That's not actually how it would work in my <laughs> right, house. It right. would be like, honey, I came home. Wow. The, um, who was here? Who did the one? <laughs> somebody, somebody sprayed somebody something on the yard. house today. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know it wasn't yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like you say, in the education process is not, it, it, it is also uh, uh, sometimes, you know, I used to say that uh, we learn the hard way and now we just call it the way. Right. So sometimes we have to go through failure to learn. Right. So it is. It That's is our biggest is. job is honestly, when we get a chance to get in front of a board, you know, we and we sit up there. So many of them, you know, feel that they're landscape experts. You know, I've taken care of my yard for 20 years and I know everything there is to know. And we get up there and we have a chance to, to speak with them. And we just say, you know, we have all the professionals who have the schooling, who have the licenses, and we can educate them on what the right plan is, what the right technique is. And, and that's what we hope that they'll be open to. And, and as much as we can educate them, and that's what we love to do. And it's a true partnership. I mean, the reality is we mm-hmm. want homeowners that want to be involved and want to understand what's going on. We really do, because, because there are eyes and ears on the day-to-day. When we're not there servicing the property, they can make a phone call and say, hey, I'm seeing what you told me about. Can you help? Plus, I imagine it makes your job easier because then you don't Absolutely. have somebody going, I mean, we, hey, what happened? We love Absolutely. boards that are, you know, proactive with us, that want to walk the grounds, that want to make it better. Those are the clients that we look for. You know, uh, yeah, we get some that, that just say, hey, just get it done. Here, here's here's what the scope of work is. Just do it. And, and of course, boom, we take, we take it and we run with it. But the other ones that want to walk the property and, you know, beautify it. That's that's our ideal person. It's always nice to work with people who value what you do. Yes, and they appreciate it. Yeah, I, I think in this day and age, we're all so busy mm-hmm. that some, you know. And I've had clients like that. Some of them are I love them to death. They're like family. But a couple of them, they've worked with me for so long. They're like, just get it done. I don't need to talk about it anymore. You got it. I'm done. You know, I'm mm-hmm. out. You just Absolutely. let me know if you yep. need me. Absolutely. And that's it's just kind of how yep. they are. Yep. Absolutely. Um. So what's what Florida Friendly Green Industries BMP Education Program was that we talked about? a few minutes ago in the last segment okay and then so what type of research should you look for when you're getting ready to hire a landscaper um you you can you can always google you can always do that but uh word of mouth you know i i would literally look around to the the hoas in the area you know tampa Bay area that you see that are nice um you know we we didn't get the vinoy because we were just an average landscape company we haven't held it for over three years because we're an average landscape company you look for the companies that are doing places like that. When you drive by the Vinoy, you see, you're like, wow, this, this place is pretty amazing. I'm going to be watching. If Who I ever it? see a spot yeah. out, I'm yeah. going yeah, to call us up and call <laughs> us They're watching out. too. Yeah. Um, yeah, they are. They are definitely watching. But but that's that's what we, I would say, I was look for properties around the Tampa Bay market that you see and you drive by and you're like, wow, who is doing that property? I need, I need to talk to them. Or you could just give us a call. Anyway. So do you stick yeah. a right. in the yard? Or? No, you know, it depends on the property. You know, and, and he's absolutely, Scott's absolutely right. Is There was a time in our, in our uh, business cycle and as a company when we were trying to mature and trying to grow and we were, we were, we didn't have references uh, to back up our work. So we were, we were fighting, scratching and crawling and we're still hungry. But the reality is now we can say, Hey, look, you know, contact these relationships that we have. Well, you got a couple of notches in your belt. You know, right. you have a, right. you have some right. some references you can give out that are good, viable references. Yeah, Absolutely, definitely. it's it's just it's interesting because in all walks of life and in any business you're in, I think you have to care more about the finished product and yeah. the result at the end of the day. And and you have to, I think the businesses that are going to make it in the next generation that we're in, which is a lot of the 20 somethings and the 30 somethings that are learning differently. And I think even my kids where they're getting ready to change common core next year, which is another whole show in itself, <laughs> but it's the whole 
point point and the principle behind common core is a different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know how much you know about it, but Mm -hmm. long story short, the, you know, the reason why they're changing this is because we're getting behind a lot of other nations and they say that they, we need to teach our kids how to, um, create jobs for themselves, how to yep. think outside of the box, because yep. a lot of things in the information technology age are that way. Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, no one has a job as a shoemaker anymore. Right, you know, right, I mean, right. that's the point. Sure. Right. And, 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 and we talked about this yesterday. We're kind of kind of the, we're t- touching on it. Uh, over overriding uh, concept is that uh, we're all in the people business. We're all we're all dealing with personalities and people, and you have to genuinely care about people. Plant material is very important. It's not as important as the person that's that's paying for it, if you will. So. And, and one of the best things about this job, and one of the reasons why I I came to Fieldstone is you really appreciate something when you step up to it, and all of a sudden it's this I'll call it dirt bowl, and then all of a sudden my crews leave at the end of the day, mm-hmm. and it's beautifully green, and there's annuals flowing everywhere, and you sit back and you say, and it looks like Disney. Man, I did something good today, and I'm, right I love it. You know, you have to love what you do, and mm-hmm. we've told our kids that a million times over. If you love what you do, you'll never work another day in your life. Right it's true. And and you have to, you know, you have to like the people you're working with too, which is a big part of that. Because if you don't love who you're working with, at the end of the day, you're, you know, at some point you're not going to like your job anymore. That's for sure. Yeah. So uh, our slogan, I don't know if you've heard it, but love where you live, or we'll fix it. Right. Okay. okay. So it's kind of like the same I thing like for you guys, but it's it's important. You have to love where you live, right? If you it's don't, true. that's usually why right. we're there. Yep. Yeah, that's a great slogan. Thank you. Trademark. Mm-hmm. Love where you live. Love I'm shake and he's bake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There it is. <laughs> so did, did you guys pull any uh, landscape jokes for me? No, just uh. natural. <laughs> just natural jokes. What you got? Because we got to wrap up the show. No, no, no. We, I know I, you have I, something good. No, 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 no. Really, I, I no, 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 no. Google jokes. I didn't want to. You know, for us, we like to be uh, uh, genuine, like we talked about before, and and typically uh, we're way over the top already. So. <laughs> yeah. We, we Way are. over the top. I, I totally forgot the tequila. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Well, maybe that's next time. I didn't. You, know? <laughs> you guys have been so awesome. You've been so much fun, and I can't wait to have another show with somebody from your team. And mm, great. Yeah. we'll bring your hortic- some of your top right. horticulturists. Am yeah. I saying that? Yeah, horticulturists. Okay. Yeah, mouthful. And- and to talk about different plants and that kind of stuff whenever right. Arbor Day is, Andrew Earth Day, or It'll maybe somewhere in the middle. There you go. Yeah. Okay. It'd be great. So what do you guys have before we close the show? Because we've got about a minute left. Anything you know, else? No, absolutely. I just want to say thanks for the opportunity. You know, every 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 chance you get to, to meet new people and to educate on what we do. And like we said, we like doing business with people who value what we do in, our, in terms of our services. But like I said, the overriding uh, value is in the people. And we appreciate meeting you, Katrina. And it's been awesome. Thank you. The pleasure has been all mine to have you guys on my show. Yeah, and thank you very again, much. Again, we appreciate have Scott it. Leroy and Mike Thatchery with Fieldstone. Thank yep. you. And... It's been an amazing show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thanks for it. having us. If you miss any part of our show today at Tampa Home Talk with Fieldstone Landscape, you can catch it in its entirety on a podcast. And we are also available on Twitter, Facebook, and across the web. Just search for Tampa Home Talk. We'd love for you to check out our show. We're also here on Tan Talk Radio Network every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. on 1340, 1350, and 1400. Thanks so much for joining us today. But for today, we are out.